Hello everyone and welcome to Acrylic Code. Today we have a new tutorial for you. Before we move on with the tutorial, I wanted to let you know that we finally launched our Patreon. To make sure that there is something for everyone, we've created four separate tiers. For the first option, you'll get full access to the touch designer files of all our tutorials we have posted and will post in the future here on our YouTube channel, exclusive files and tutorials on projects we're not going to post on YouTube, and you will have a voice on choosing the themes of our next projects. In the second option, you'll get access to all benefits from Tier 1, plus even more exclusive touch designer files and tutorials, including some of the projects of the Generative Short series, as well as early access to new YouTube tutorials. In the third option, the Pro, you'll get all benefits from the previous tiers, plus touch designer files with Python scripts, custom components, automation pipelines with Touch Designer, JavaScript projects related to creative coding, and also access to regular live streams. For the last tier, the master option, all previous tiers benefits are included, all the generative short series projects, custom scripts to create collections with up to 10,000 NFTs. You will be able to use all our internal tools, all of our recent work, files and tutorials, and monthly exclusive meetups. I will leave the link for the Patreon in the description box below. And if you'd like to give a contribution in supporting us make more creative projects, that would mean a lot. Otherwise, you can also help us a lot by subscribing to the channel and turning on the notification bell so you don't miss out on any new videos. So much for our Patreon, now let's move on to the tutorial. Okay, let's start. First, prepare your workspace. Split the screen into two screens and set one of them to top viewer. Shift the border so that the left screen is bigger since you need more space for your network. Right click on an empty space on the left screen and unselect backdrop tops so that you don't have the render in the back to distract you. And once you're here, create an out top and turn the render flag on. In this tutorial, we're going to create a top instancing network. Start by adding a box top and then right click on the output to attach a geometry. For the render, we will need a camera and lights, so attach one of each as well. Press Tab to add the render top, which will connect automatically to the geo, lights and camera and connect its output to the out. Go to the parameter window of the box next and scale it down so that it's really small. You most probably will need to tweak it again later, but for now it needs to be really small. There we have our base. Now for the actual instancing network, press tab and let's start by creating a noise top. Right click on the output of the noise and attach an alt top. Click back on the noise node and in the parameter window, turn off the monochrome parameter so that you get a colorful noise. To have a clear network, click on the null node and rename it to pause. This is going to give us the position of the instances. So go to geo, select instance, Turn the instancing on and drag and drop the position null to the translate operator. Select translate x to r, translate y to g and translate z to b. And you'll end up with this box right here. To make the background black, right click on the connecting line between the alt top and the render top and add a transform operator. In the parameter window, set the alpha parameter to 1 and turn on comp of your background color. To clean up this messy box, right click on the connecting line between the noise and the position null and add a math. In the parameter window, go to range and rearrange the values here from minus 1 to 1. This doesn't immediately solve the problem because the pixel format of the noise, as we see here in the common parameters, is set by default to an 8-bit format, and this doesn't allow any negative values. Set the pixel format here to 32-bit float and this will fix everything. So there we have a noise of points. To better see the cloud of points, you can switch from top viewer to geometry viewer. Now here we have already endless possibilities to arrange these points here. If you go to the parameter window of the noise, changing the values of the seed, period, harmonics, exponent, among all other values, will give you limitless new images. But for this tutorial we are going to see something more advanced. Press tab to create a ramp top and before you move on with the ramp, press tab again to create a constant chop which will set the resolution of the whole network. Once you're here, go ahead and rename it to res and set the value to 150. Make sure you put the constant chop viewer active and drag it on top of the ramp long enough for the parameter window of the ramp to appear 
go to common and then drop it onto the resolution. Select shop reference. Right now we're doing squared instancing and we want both values of the resolution to be the same. If you want to do landscape instancing, then you have to create two constant chops and then drag and drop the first constant chop onto the first value of the resolution and the second one to the second value of the resolution. Repeat the same process to set the resolution of the noise. This will allow you to have a central control over the resolution of the whole image. So if you type a value of 200 for example, then it will change accordingly the resolution in the whole image. You only have to be careful here not to set the resolution too high if your computer cannot handle it, otherwise Touch Designer might crash. Now back to the ramp. Right click on the out and add a flip top. The flip top will flip an image in the X or Y direction. It also offers a flop option to turn each row of pixels into a column. Set the flop parameter here to bottom left and this will flip the image in the X direction and rotate it 90 degrees clockwise. So then the ramp will set the color data in the X axis and the flip will set the data in the Y axis. Right now we see the colors going from black to white, but in tops the x-axis will be the red value and the y-axis will be the green value. To make this happen, press tab and create a reorder top. In the first input of the reorder, attach the ramp and to its second input, attach the flip. In the parameter window, we see the output channel red is already set as input 1. Go ahead and set input 2 for the green output. Since we don't have any blue, set the blue output value to 0 and the alpha value can stay as it is. What we then get is this image. This is a very important image which contains the coordinates of a grid in the top world. Go ahead and rename it to UBs. To better illustrate what I mean, I will attach a null here and connect it to the out and yes, there we go, there we have our grid. Here we also see that there is the exact same problem as before with the pixel format of the ramp. So go to the common tab of the parameter window and set the format to a 32-bit float format. For the rearranging of the values, just recycle the math from down here, connect the null to the math and the math to the out. What we're actually doing here is we are using tops to draw the position of the boxes. This is very powerful since all calculations for tops are performed on the system's GPU. So every resolution change you might want to do will be faster and the chances of the program crashing are lower than if you were to perform the same operation with SOPs, for instance. Okay, for the next step, right click on the connecting line between the null and the math and add the display stop. Connect the noise to its second output and you'll get this squared noisy shape. Go to the parameter window of the displays, set the displays weight to zero to begin with and then slowly increase the value to a point you want. Move on to the right, click on the camera and in the parameter window increase the value of the translate Y to get the camera closer to the image. Click on the render, go to common and set the resolution to 1024 by 1024. Go back to the camera to further decrease the instance to the image by increasing the translate Y value. Once you've done this, go to the box node and in here you can increase the size of the box. Be careful not to set it too high so that you preserve the resolution. From here you can go on tweaking the parameters of the noise or even go to transform and type in a python expression in the y coordinate to animate the noise. But for the purposes of this tutorial we are interested on a higher value of the noise. Now let me illustrate what we have up to now. If I switch the right screen to geometry viewer then we can see that even though we get the illusion that what we have is a voluminous shape, what we really have is just a flat squared shape. So let's go back to top viewer and in the next step you're going to bring some volume into the image. To do this copy paste the noise from up here. In the parameter window, set the period to 2, the harmonics to 0, slightly decrease the amplitude to around 0.43, and toggle on the monochrome. We want to paint this noise blue. It's important we do this because we have instanced the red, green and blue data, but if we check here on the image, we only have red and green. So we need the blue for the Z value in order to add a depth dimension. So go back to the second noise, right click on the out and attach a lookup. We want to change the color values of the noise connected to the first input through values deriving from the second input. So right click on the second input and attach a ramp. In the parameter window set the mode to RGB, 
and set the values of green and red to zero. Remember here that the intensity of the color is correlated to the depth dimension, in case you want to come back later and lower the blue intensity. Hold shift here to select both the ramp and the second noise and set the pixel format to 32-bit float. To add the blue channel to the image, right click on the connecting line between the displays and the math and attach an add operator. Connect the lookup to its second input and there we have the depth. To compare it to before, let me switch to Geometry Viewer again. And now we can clearly see our shape has all three dimensions. Same as before, you can tweak the values of the second noise here to see if you like the effects, like the harmonics or the period, or you can even make this audio reactive. For now, move the camera away from the image and change the values of the noise until you have an image you're comfortable with and looks nice to you. Then go to the transform in the parameter window and in the translate Z parameter type in upstime.seconds times 0.1. This animation is only being applied in the Z direction, seeing how this noise holds the depth. Copy the expression and go to the first noise, which is giving us the displays in the X and Y direction. In the parameter window, paste the expression we just copied in the translate Z as well. After this, you can again mess around with the parameters of the noise. There really is no standard value here, just have fun and choose something you like. In the next step, it will be nice to introduce some color into our image. A little tip before, you can select all nodes while holding shift and simultaneously turn off the viewer active flag. This will increase the FPS. Now there are different ways to add the color, so let's see one of them. Copy paste the ramp from up here and attach it to a null and rename the null to colors. Set the color of the color null and the position null nodes to red so that we don't forget that these are the nodes driving the instances. Then you can go ahead and already choose the colors in the ramp if you already know how you want it to look like or you can wait after you've referenced it. To reference the color node, go to Geometry, go to the second instance of the parameter window and then drag and drop the color onto the color operator. Set all R, G, B and A parameters. Now you can actually tell that the pattern in the node is also reflected on our image. To change this, go to Ramp parameter window and slide the face parameter slider. In here, you can also change the type of ramp entirely to circular for instance. One thing you could also do is animate the changes in the ramp. But first, to have a smooth animation, attach a blur here and in the parameter window increase the sample set and the filter size. Go back to the ramp and to animate the face, type in upstime.seconds time 0.2. Choose an extra color to better recognize the changes and there you go. In case the color here is too circular or too regular for you, you could attach a displacing between the ramp and the blur. Attach a new noise top to the second input of the displays and then you can change the values of the displays until you find a sweet spot you're happy with. Ok, let's go back to the box in the beginning. What we have now are perfect squared boxes, but you could also increase the value of one of the sides to get a rectangle type of box. Let me go to the geometry viewer so we can better see how these look like. While in here we can also notice that our boxes don't really have an orientation and the movement somehow is not smooth enough. To fix this, let's go back to our position data. If you put it viewer active, then you can see the position values. The movement here is creating the movement of our image. We need to analyze this movement. We want to know the direction vector for each particle at each given frame. To get this information, we have to get the difference from the frame we're currently in to the previous frame. This main trick will give us the orientation. To get the values, right click on the out of the position, attach a top to chop to convert the pixels of the top into channels 
and in the parameter window set the crop to full image since we want to extract the whole image. Also make sure that the download type is set to next frame. Right click on the output of the top to chop and add a shuffle top to reorganize the samples in a set of channels. In the parameter window set the methods to sequence channels by name. To convert the channels back into a top image add a chop to top. Set the data formats to RGB and A and have the pixels arranged in a fit to square image layout. Now what we end up with here looks very similar to the position we had before. But the difference here is that this is actually the frame before the actual frame. To get the difference, add the subtract top. In the first input, connect the mini end, so the actual frame, and the second input is the subtrend, so the frame before. And there we have the difference. Attach another null here, rename it to orientation, and I'll also change the node color here to red. From here go back to the geo and in the rotate operator we drag and drop the orientation we just created. Set values to R, G and B and there we have our changes. Let's also see this through the geometry viewer. Another way we could achieve the same effect would be with a different stop. The current frame in the first input, the previous frame in the second input and connect the different stop to the orientation and there we go. To add here another effect you could also add a composite and connect again both frames to it and get different results if you choose different operations or different order of the input operators. So try this out, play around with the colors, see what works and what doesn't work. And once you're satisfied with the results here, you can go back to the beginning of the network and set the resolution higher if your computer can handle it. You can further increase the size of the boxes. You can make changes in the noises. Change the values of the color network. You can also add entirely new operators like a blur for instance. And in here you can increase the filter size in order to have a smooth animation. Otherwise this was it for the tutorial. Thank you so so much for watching. I hope you liked it and found some inspiration to try this out yourself. And yes, see you on the next video. Until then, have a great time. Bye!